Hi everyone, I'm Tana and in this episode we came to Seoul's most popular attraction, Namsan. Beyond the fact that Namsan is a great recreational area, it holds historical significant things about this mountain that we will be learning today. This walking trail runs from the back streets of Chanchung Gymnasium to Namdamun. There are hidden stories that even Koreans don't know about here, which is well known as the most visited place in Seoul. So let's go and reveal the stories. As you may have expected, today we'll be having our guide, Susanna. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. <laughs> we actually came a bit far from Hanyang Dosan. Like, what brings us here? Yeah, no, this is another kind of tragic aspect mm. to Hanyang Tosong. I want to point out, remember we learned about the inscribed stones? Yeah, like 97, right? Yeah, 97, 97, 97 yeah. sections. And if we read the Chinese character, mm -hmm. on the right hand side, the first character is Han, and then Ja, mm -hmm. and then it says Yuk Pek Chok. So, remember each section had a name. Yeah, yeah, I remember This was that. The, the Kang section of the wall, which mm. is the 48th section. Mm -hmm. And this should be actually behind where the Banyang Tree Hotel is. Really? Yeah. Why is it here? Why is it here? Well, I don't know exactly why. Yeah. But it's, it's a bit sad. The, when this building, nearby building, was built in um, the early 1960s, mm -hmm. someone decided that they were going to take these beautiful Hanyang Tosong stones mm. that date from Taejo, so date from 1396, the so very old stones. Mm. And we know that not just because the inscribed stone tells us that, but the shape. As you can see, they're yes, not I finished. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah, natural yeah. stones. Decided to bring them from their location mm. behind where the Banyan, Banyan Tree Hotel is and come down here and use them as a retaining wall. Oh no, that's really sad. Yeah, it's yeah. really sad. And I think uh, the important thing to remember is that not only did the Hanyang Tosong undergo a lot of destruction during the, the Japanese occupation from yes. 1910 to 1945, but even afterwards for many years, people weren't always so quick to realize is its historical mm. value. Of course, Now of we course. would never do anything like this. Exactly, but, but back then. we have to come here to find that the, the stones from the earliest part, the building of the Hanyang Tosan were actually now being used as a retaining wall next to a, a building. That's really sad. Yeah. yeah. But don't be too sad. Okay. Because we're <laughs> going to head up to Namsan and we're, we're hmm. going to see a very, very beautifully well-preserved section of the wall there. I'm so ready for this. Great. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yep. The pine trees are so nice. It's yeah. quiet and beautiful here. And I, I wanted to show you this place because mm -hmm. we just saw an example of the wall being taken out of yes, its original yes. place and used simply as building materials, not really respected for yeah. its historical value. And here, if you look to your right, you see the walls are from the 14th century. Mm. These were the part of the original building of the Hanyang Tosong. And the walls, as you can see, are just taken naturally from nature. They've not been cut yeah. or shaped in any way. And they've just been stacked up here along the wall. It's and really beautiful. And it's amazing because this dates from the 14th century and it's still in really excellent condition. Mm. And the pine trees here, to me, are very special. Really? Why? Yeah. Well, pine trees in Korean tradition, if you look at pottery or you look at paintings, so many pine trees are really depicted like pine trees, in, yes. Yes, in artistic works. And pine trees are planted in sacred places like mm. royal tombs. Mm. And for Koreans, pine trees are almost human beings. They respected oh, really? and loved pine trees so much. Wow. To find this spot, again, yeah. we're right in the middle of Seoul. We're on the southern side. I don't feel like I'm in Seoul. Well, you really. don't feel like you're yeah. in Seoul. <laughs> a special place to come. So maybe when you come back with your friends or something, you can come here 
and bring your friends or come here and read a book and enjoy the, the peace course. and the stillness that's here. Yeah, and I'll also tell them the history of Hanyang Dosa, ah, thanks to you. You <laughs> are going to be a great guide, I think. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm loving this, like the atmosphere yes. is so peaceful, yes. the pine trees and the air here is so fresh, right? Yes, because yeah. we have lots of nature around of us course. and so they're I'm helping this. to clean the air. Yeah. So. Wow. So, Unfortunately, our next stop, mm -hmm. we go and encounter once again the reality of what happened to Hanyang Tosung in the early 20th century, mm, which okay. was not so happy. Oh, but we have to learn about it, right? We have in to learn about history. it. We have to learn about it. But just here we have this peaceful, beautiful moment. Oh, let's enjoy it before we go. <laughs> We're here, but what is exactly historical on-site museum? We're here today with a very, very special opportunity because mm. this historic site museum is actually not formally opened yet. Oh, really? Yes, we're getting a special preview <laughs> today <laughs> and it will be open in mid-October. Ah, uh, okay. So, an historic site museum is a place where you see the artifacts as they were found in the ground. Mm. So, as we walked along Hanyong Tosung, we've yes. seen cases where, where the city wall has been rebuilt yes, yes, with newer true. stones yes. and almost restored to its original condition. Mm. But here, the museum decided that they wanted to have the opportunity to show us the actual artifacts as they were found mm. in the ground. So wow. I'll take you inside and show you a few things. Okay, Let's go. very special part. Let's take a look right here. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. these stones are obviously from Sukchong. So this is the beginning of the 18th century. Yeah, yeah. So you see the square front of the stones. Yes. But look at the back. Oh. Look at the back. Do you see it's long and narrow? Are they like that like in other places as well? Yes. Everywhere. Oh. They're like that. That is a real special fe architectural feature wow. of the wall. And from the back, these much smaller stones, the broken stones, oh. would be pushed in to support the front stone. Let's walk a little bit further. We can get a better was, idea. You, you, they were just like squared ones, you know? Everyone okay. thinks that. Yeah. But this is, this is a very special construction technique. You can see here, yeah, the yeah. smaller stones were pushed inside to support the outer stones. Wow, it's like a new way of looking at them. Yes, because obviously we can't dig into the existing wall. But here we can see how it was supported from the back. And um, this is also part of it, right? No, actually, that, that is part of the foundations of the fountain that we're going to see above. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you see these very long uncut stones? This would date from Keijo. I remember you yeah, mentioned 14th that. century. Here, we also have a very, very special feature that we can't see anywhere else on the Hanyong Tosong. What is it? You see these holes that were dug in the ground? Yes, what is it? These holes there, it's believed that these were used to support the scaffolding. So when they built it. So you have the, the wooden scaffolding that and you could lift the rocks up and then place the rocks. And these were the post holes for the wooden, for the wooden scaffolding. And again, behind there, you can see the depth of the small rocks that supported the inside of Hanyang Tosong. I've never seen anything like that. No, it, it's really, because our idea is that it's just a bunch of cubed yeah, shaped that's, stones that's what that I are stacked now, you know? one upon the other. But actually the construction method was very, very sophisticated. And we even see some larger stones from Sunjo from the 19th century. These, you can look at the shape and guess. Yes, maybe from um, Sejong? Yeah. Okay, with the smaller rounded shape that we see. What happened to this area is that during the Japanese colonial period, the Japanese decided that they wanted to build their main Shinto shrine here. And we'll see the foundations that are left from that. So basically, they picked this very auspicious location and basically built, it was a 15 building compound related to the Shinto shrine and they basically went ahead and built it either, if not on top, but right next to the Hanyang Tosong. So here, if we stop for a moment, what was discovered is that um, further down, you see the uh, remainder, remaining water fountain. And after the Japanese occupation, 
Namsan became a very popular recreational area. And they built a botanical garden here. There was a beautiful water fountain here. And many people came up here for recreational activities. And when it was decided that we were, they were going to take down the botanical garden, just like with Dongdaemun and the two arched floodgate, they had no idea that there, were any, there was anything left here related to Hanyang Tosong. They were very surprised and delighted to find remnants of Hanyang Tosong, and they were also amazed to find the foundation stone for the, these, this was the main shrine of the oh, Shinto Japanese shrine right. built during, in 1925 during the Japanese occupation. So here we can see once again um, some of the negative effects of colonialization on Korea. Even in modern times, there was no idea that the Hanyang Tosung might have been here, so things were just built upon it. So the, the purpose, the real purpose of this outdoor on-site museum is to show us the artifacts as they are actually found in the ground. Wow, mm. I bet they were like also surprised when they found it here. Yes, well. they were absolutely surprised and actually happy to find yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Why is uh, Namdamun is known as national treasure, whereas Dongdamun as a simple treasure? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very good question, and many people don't understand exactly what the difference is. When Namdamun was designated, made it a national treasure, the wooden part of the structure, the gate pavilion, was actually the oldest of all the gates in Seoul. Oh, really? And okay. therefore, it deserved a slightly higher designation. Mm. Dongdaemun or, or Hongunjimun was actually rebuilt in 1869. Mm. So that showed late Chosun Dynasty architecture, and this was very early Chosun Dynasty oh. ar architecture. And therefore, this deserved a slightly higher level of rating, so a national treasure. Unfortunately, this was burnt down by an arsonist in 2008, mm. and it was only finished rebuilding in 2013. Oh, really? So, one more question. You talked a lot about uh, the destruction of Hanyang Dosan during the Japanese colonial period. Mm -hmm. But why were two gates are still standing? Ah, oh, that's a very, very, also a very, very important question. Um, actually, the major destruction of Hanyang Dosan began in 1907, mm -hmm. and that's when the Crown Prince of Japan was scheduled to make a visit to Korea, and he said he couldn't walk through this gate. So they had to tear down the wall so he could go past the gate. Oh. He thought this was much too low for someone of his high level oh, to really? walk through, yes. So both sides of the gate were torn down. Mm. And then subsequently other, other gates were torn down because they were impeded road construction and things like that. Now the reason why Namdaemun and Dongdaemun, the south gate and the east gate are, at, at, are still standing at this point is a very ironic one. Mm. Um, the Japanese at that time considered actually tearing down both gates, mm. but they were stopped from tearing down by the fact that during the Indian Wars, the Japanese troops, when they captured Seoul, came in through both of these gates, mm. and therefore the gates were historically significant to the Japanese also. Oh, so they decided that for that reason, because it was historically significant to them, mm -hmm. that they would be preserved. Not because mm -hmm. they were interested in preserving Korean culture. Well, now we know about it, so uh, yeah. thank you for letting me know. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we I step we inside? Go inside? Let's yeah. go. So, before we finish our, our brief visit to Sungdaemun, the, the South Gate, there's one other interesting thing that I think people should notice when they come. Oh, and that's what is the, it? That's the fact that the hanging calligraphy board, mm. okay, is hung vertically oh. rather than horizontally. Really? We okay. saw horizontal in Changi Moon and in mm. Sukjung Moon. And here, the reason why it's hung verti vertically is it says one way to keep the fire mm. from the south from getting to the wooden gate pavilion. Wow. Yeah. Very Unfortunately, that yeah. didn't work in 2008, oh. but hopefully it will mm. protect this particular wow. gate, this very important gate, well into the future. I hope so too. Great. <laughs> Here we are at Sungnaemun, which is unfortunately the last stop on today's journey. Yes. So, how has it been for you? 
Well, actually, uh, I learned so much thanks to you about Korean history and culture. Oh, thank and you. my favorite part is that I'm really uh, thankful to Korean government, Korean people, that they're trying so hard to preserve all their history. Yeah. As even now, we can freely go and learn more about Korean history and how it actually shaped Korea into how it is now, right? So that's my favorite part. I think, I think that's really the most important message for today. Yes. Mm -hmm. And thanks so much, Susanna, for this oh, tour. It was you were, a, you yeah. were a great host. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate your interest. Oh, it means so you. much to me. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. And those who are watching, our journey ends here. But don't be sad. We'll bring even more interesting and informative content soon. So make sure to like this video, subscribe, and uh, press that bell button. So to keep updated and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.